Now I'm recording. Welcome again. Um, and I was just saying Small Favors is its 16th year and there are many reasons we do the show. One of which is to encourage artists to have a challenge. Um, and I love hearing stories about artists who enjoy the challenge of working small or just changing their perspective and how that can affect their whole body of work going forward. Um, it's a chance for artists from of all stages to be in a show together, which is a great democratic process. We have people from um, students in the school at the Clay Studio up to kind of the highest level of professional artists, everyone in between. And it also means that people who are in the Clay Studio and might want to purchase a piece have the opportunity that we have works that go from really $20 all the way up to $1,000. So many different opportunities for people to consider themselves collectors. And we have people who come back every year and you can put your cubes up on the wall and feel like you have your own little art gallery. So those are just two of the many reasons besides that we all love tiny things and it is joyful to walk through that gallery. So I am gonna start out by um, saying that the place where the clay studio stands and where I sit today is part of the traditional land of the Lenni Lenape. We acknowledge the Lenni Lenape as the original people of this land and their continuing relationship with their territory. In our acknowledgement of the continued presence of Lenape people, we affirm the aspiration of the great Lenape chief Tamanend that there be harmony between the indigenous people of this land and the descendants of the immigrants to this land, as long as the rivers and creeks flow and the sun, moon and stars shine. Thank you again, all of you for being here and just remember that we are recording and that this will be available on our public YouTube channel after um, we are done today. We are excited to have um, these nine artists in addition to Kintsuki Yamada, who is our guest juror. And we are gonna um, chat with Kintsuki for a minute at the end. We're saving our juror for the end of our um, presentation today. And I'm gonna share with you my screen as soon as I can close some of these other windows. Bear with me. And do, do, do. There we go. So here's a little peek into um, a corner of the gallery at the Clay Studio where we have the exhibition up on view. Why, when people, it's like parallel parking. When people are watching me, <laughs> it just takes a little longer. <laughs> um, so here's a nice view of a corner of the exhibition. Um, here's a little view of where we have the title of the show. Um, I wanna take this opportunity to thank my colleagues at the Clay Studio. Raymond Rourke is the graphic designer. He is amazing and always makes the gallery look great with his graphics. Naima Stith, Shannon Jones, and Josie Bachelman um, were our integral every day and were a huge part of the reason why we managed to get 300 works of art uh, photographed, put into the database, um, put onto the website in a way that makes everything look beautiful. So thank you to them. And there's another view. And I, I just always, I can't help pointing out that we always have some slightly larger favors. And this year they are on that pedestal in the middle of the room. Um, it's, it's fun, I think, because people just get really excited and they just don't measure that carefully, I guess. <laughs> but we, we have to put them out anyway. I'm not encouraging you to, to make something that's too big. Try to get it in the box. But, um, oh, here's some other creative ways that we can put things that are too big. <laughs> Just put the lid on top of the box. Um, and then some people intentionally um, expand outside of the box. So um, we always love it when people kind of do that on purpose. All right, so I am gonna invite Margarita Paz Pedro to join us first. And as I do that, I'm gonna tell you that Margarita earned her BFA at the University of Colorado, Boulder, her MA at the University of New Mexico. She makes large scale ceramic tile murals collaboratively with an organization that she co-leads and co-founded, as well as wheel throwing porcelain functional work that integrate who she is and where she's from. 
Margarita, I am gonna pin you as soon as I find you on my list. And there you are. I'm gonna invite you to tell us a little bit about your general body of work and then the challenge of working small for small fevers. Hello everybody, my name is Margarita Paz Pedro. And like she said, I am located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I do two kinds of ceramic building. One is large scale ceramic tile murals. The other is wheel thrown functional work. Um, and they are very different from each other, but they kind of inform each other in, in other ways. But, but definitely um, thinking about the large scale ceramic tile murals and then going, going down to the small favor sizes is different and um, I think I they both fulfill me differently and uh, um, the collaborative work is really uh, fun and hard work but we were and we work with often a group of youth that help us create these large murals and we um, do it in the summer and it takes uh, about two months but we work on the programming pretty much year round so um, it's a whole different way of thinking and planning than what the, the wheel throwing and my individual work does. Um, there was a time shortly after I had my daughter that I only did the mural making. And um, I think when she was older, she was about five is when I was like, you know what? I need to go back. The wheels call my name. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that from other people. Is there like an incredible relief when you're just sitting there with a tiny thing that nobody else gets to have an opinion about? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I welcome others' opinions, but um, it is in my, I'm, I'm fairly introverted, so it's in my own mind and um, my own personal designs that, that these come through. So um, like this one specifically is, and you'll see the other two pictures. Um, I have like an ongoing theme of anatomical hearts and playing with skulls and also utilizing um, Pueblo pottery designs because I'm Laguna Pueblo, Santa Clara Pueblo, and Mexican American. So I sort of combine all my cultures and put it into my, my own artwork on with both of them, with the mural making and the individual functional work. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned yesterday that the, the cups are, you were saying you use the anatomical heart and the skulls, and there's a series. You're, um, can you tell us a little bit about that progression you were talking about? Yeah, so these two on the left are kind of um, me working through it. I'm still working through it right now, but the plan is to, to have a, a circular series of them going, transforming from a skull to the anatomical heart all the way around it's kind of in a clock way in a clock setup so yeah um yeah. the one and these are just kind of like all right how would they look and i and i can't keep on i can't hold on to them long enough to like actually put them in that's because they're so great everybody wants them right yeah that's lovely well um it's a lovely little cup i'm so happy to have it in the show and um Thank you so much for participating in Small Favors and for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Um, excellent. So if we move from New Mexico to Canada and I will invite Sibel to join me. Hi. <laughs> as I switch my pins and um, tell you all that Sibel Pilon is a multidisciplinary artist from Quebec, Canada. She earned a BA at the University of Montreal and is inspired by the material culture of her heritage. So I will just ask you to um, answer that same question, talk a little bit about your general work and then the challenge of working small, which I, I think may be a trick question for you, but we'll let you talk about that. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm a French, so sorry for my strong accent. Uh, from Quebec. Uh, I live in Montreal and here in Quebec uh, there is no formal academic program in ceramic in French except a three years technical program when you are where you are basically trained to be a studio potter. So I did that four years ago and since then I'm working through mainly functional art. 
I work at home in my garage in a, the, a very dense urban area in Montreal. So I have this chance to have a, a home studio even in the city. Uh, in my work, ornamentation takes a big place. I work with pattern from my French Canadian cultural heritage, uh, quilt, uh, uh, it, uh, it can be a candy mold uh, from a whole factory in my neighbor that uh, clothes, um, anything really. And I transpose them into my ceramics. Each collection is the result of an endless amount of variation of the same pattern, in fact. So I do my surface, um, to do my surface decoration, I use a water etching technique. I developed while at school. And uh, although my work main, uh, I work mainly with clay, for me, it's very the decorative that remain the real mat uh, raw material of my practice. So yeah, I'm interested in everything that was historically discredited on the base of their femininity or considered non-essential, inferior or amateur in Western culture. So tableware versus cultural work, surface decoration versus form, craft versus fine art, earthenware versus porcelain, commercial versus institutional, et cetera. And uh, it's the second year I have the chance to participate to small favor. Um, I already uh, work at small scale sometime in my normal studio work. So for me, it wasn't like a big challenge or something. Uh, miniature is something also that always attract me anyway. Like for example, when I'm very stressed out, I always, always go to uh, Etsy to like um, uh, to shop for miniature food. <laughs> and it that shoots me a lot. I know it's kind of strange, but I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one with, uh, to do that. And uh, yeah, so small favor application arrive after Christmas always. And for me, Christmas is the worst time of the year. I'm, also, um, I'm always dead af at that time, but it's also the time for me to try new ID. And this year, the pom pom cup I submit is the first piece of many I did with this kind of adornment of flower-ish pom pom pimple-like stuff. And this is funny because now, um, I have a, a kin full of a, of peace with this currently fire, firing uh, downstairs in my studio. So this is the, the thing I can say about it. But uh, my work is always evolving. Um, for example, this year I stopped throwing my piece on the wheel. Um, and uh, I'll, I will also stop to use porcelain this summer. So I switched to earthenware and I, I can't wait, uh, red earthenware. So that's it. <laughs> ah, that's so wonderful. I love that you did an experiment for small favors, but then yeah. um, you're continuing in the rest of your work. That's great. You're making a lot of changes right at the same time with porcelain change and yeah. hand building and the pom pom. So. Yeah, but um, the red earthenware I will use, uh, in fact, is the only commercial clay that is made from local uh, Quebec material here. And it's really great, like for functional work and everything. So, yeah, and for color, because I use a lot of surface decoration, earthenware is just a normal choice, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. I love that it will be your local clay. That's fun. Thank you, Sibel. Thanks. Okay, excellent. Um, so now we are going to move to Emily. Hi, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Excellent. So Emily Cleaver earned a degree at Tyler School of Art um, and also served as studio tech there and currently lives in the Philadelphia area. I yeah, it was uh, hard to find your bio online, Emily. So feel free to fill in. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have a website yet. Um, I'm graduating in May um, from Tyler with a ceramics degree. Ah, so you're um, earning your degree. That's what I I'm earning said. my degree. Yeah, <laughs> almost there. Like two more weeks. Um, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a, an assistant studio tech to Natalie Kunzi there, um, and she's the best. Um, I. Uh, recently had my thesis show. So these are two works from that. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to um, install in person at Tyler, uh, which we didn't think was going to happen this semester. Um, a lot of my work centers around like personal exploration of the unconscious and the ephemeral. Um, I don't fire work very often, um, but obviously all of this is fired. Um, 
I work with like a lot of imagery and ideas that stem from like religious texts and mythology and familial legends. And I kind of think my work is mostly just a way for me to sort out like my place in the world and what's going on around me. Um, I work primarily in ceramics for my thesis. I experimented with um, adding stained glass and glass paneling into ceramic vessels. <laughs> and um, yeah. Um, and I find a lot of comfort in giving like non-physical ideas and like icons a permanent place. Um, that's why I love like the materiality of ceramic. I feel like it holds a lot. Um, these were like vessels, these were like containment vessels and they were like very therapeutic to make. Um, but yeah, a lot of what I'm working with is just like using the ceramic object to kind of like tie down um, interpersonal and like global systems um, and like codifying that in my own way. Yeah, um, that's amazing. And the idea of that, you know, containment that has so many layers of meaning and the fact that you're inserting these glass panels, I assume after firing, it looks like you have some yeah. glass putty in there to hold it in. Yeah, they're soldered in. Um, so okay. I, yeah, I like use the glaze on the vessel as like the secondary piece of glass. And then you like copper foil, um, just technical stuff. Um, you like copper foil and then you like solder it in. Um, or what I've been doing is that. Um, so it was really fun and exciting to like play around with that. And then for small favors, I just kind of got to like make something really small and sweet. Um, I kind of use it as like an opportunity. I've been in small favors once before in 2019. Um, and I also made a small room set up <laughs> that year. Um, I really like dollhouses and I like like tiny furniture and tiny things. Um, and I like the idea of like creating a space and the cube is really nice for that. Um, so I kind of made this like 60s theme, uh, like bedroom corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and there's a, there's a few different threads um, through the different artists that we're talking to today. And of course we just heard Sibyl say that, Sibyl say that she liked to buy tiny food which we do have some tiny food in the show if people want to go to the website, but of Emily's tiny furniture and tiny sculpture. I just, I love that extra little sculpture there on the table. Um, sculpture within a sculpture. And the, um, yeah, the, the rug has its little hole so you know exactly where to put the leg of the chair and it all fits together so nicely. So uh, I find you. it very soothing to just imagine myself sitting in the chair. That's the goal. It's just to imagine if like you were Thumbelina sized, you could just have a little rest. I, I think I've, uh, I've probably mentioned this a couple of times in Lunch and Learns, but I do have, a, I'm looking at a dollhouse and as I'm talking to you all that my, um, I've been, it's been in process since I was about 12 years old, but I love tiny things also. It's good stuff. Well, thanks and good luck with the end of school. That's so exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we are going to turn to Alan next. And where did you go, Alan? You were here a minute ago. Oh, there you are. And Alan Willoughby spent much of his career as the executive director of Perkins Center for the Arts, where he developed interdisciplinary art and ed art education programs. His work is largely wood fired, um, and he uses a kiln that he built at his home in New Jersey. Welcome, Alan. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, very nice to be here today. Uh, speak briefly about my work. Uh, I think as ceramic artists, we're really very privileged uh, individuals in that we're working with the four primary elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And I think my uh, experience as a, an artist is always trying to get closer and connect more um, deeply to those elements. Uh, so on the right here, <clears throat> I have a what I call a, a vase, a split vase uh, wheel thrown with uh, sculptural elements. This is fired in the wood kiln, as Jennifer mentioned, and really the surface is very much about um, the flashing uh, from the wood ash uh, on the surface of the clay. Very uh, simple decoration. On the left, I have my a series that I started uh, about four years ago uh, when came working in the studio, I became very concerned about where our country was headed as many other people became very concerned. And so I call them my empowerment mugs. They have words on them that uh, are help, will hopefully help get us to a better place. 
the word the mug on the left says uh, good trouble necessary trouble which is a john lewis quote and the one on the right says uh speak truth to power uh and uh what i've done start doing was selling the mugs and then donating the money that i raised from selling them to nonprofits that are trying to make the world a better place um so I felt that that really helped me with my studio practice, feeling a little bit more comfortable in there making um, bowls and platters and teapots and everything that I love to make. But I just felt like I had to make some kind of statement and do something that was a little bit more proactive besides going to some marches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway, that's uh, pretty much about my work there. Um, Great, thank you. I, and I love those cups. People are, you know, we have some of them in the shop and people are really drawn to them and always, you know, you have to pick it up to really see what it says, which I think is um, smart because it means that the person has to really engage with it in order to understand what you're trying to say. Thank you. And then uh, responding to the small favors show, the challenge of working small. Uh, up until a few years ago, usually when I really felt I had to get out of the, the range of a sort of a medium functional size, I would go large. Um, and then um, I'm not sure, uh, I guess the small favors show being around and everything uh, at some point it just sort of clicked I try the reverse and go small which is not my natural tendency <laughs> or hasn't been in general but certainly um, I got into it very much and enjoyed it I've been in several of the shows over the years and um, from it actually I've ended up uh, doing some series groupings of small pieces that are mounted on wooden bases and found uh, I really enjoy those as well but I the piece here is really just a very is actually fired in the bag wall of the of the kiln, so it's getting a, a lot of direct ash right onto the piece, uh, particularly on the left there, and then on the right is more the the back side, the more quiet side of the piece. Yeah, and that's another um, I guess related to my other comment that you have to pick the thing up and really turn it around to understand the whole story because the back is um so that's let's see the back is what was facing the wall right and the front is what was getting the fire um, right the front is facing the where the the flame is where the firebox is correct yes. yeah and it's actually pieces like that that are really educational as well and that kind of ties back to your educational time at perkins that you 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 can easily teach someone who doesn't understand about a kiln something integral about it just by showing them this object and explaining that placement in the kiln makes a big difference. So there's a lot of layers of um, interesting stuff here. And I'll only note, look at look everyone at how perfectly this fits in the box. If it had been like one centimeter taller, it wouldn't have fit. So good job, yes, Alan. You mentioned that yesterday. Uh... <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's not good. Sometimes if you just turn, turn it a certain way, we have all these tricks. But I think I need out. to borrow a box again. I did do that one year. No, well, <laughs> it, turned sure out, that it, was it. it turned out fine. So it's all good. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay, excellent. We're going to have Ashley join us next. Hmm. Hi. 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 There you are. I can pin you now. I see you. And Ashley. Um, another, another person who's hard to find on the internet. <laughs> I have Ashley Perini grew up and still lives in the Philadelphia area and earned her degree at Tyler School of Art. Ooh. Is that right? So elusive. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and I can fill in some of the blanks or okay. just leave it that way too. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm sensing that you enjoy being mysterious. Maybe. Yes. It's part of my edge. I don't know, whatever you'd call it. Um, okay, so hello everyone. Actually, let me start my timer if you don't mind, because you know. I appreciate it. I don't mind. Everyone's doing good though. So like actually 15 minutes now. Come on. Um, <laughs> hi everyone. I'm Ashley Perini. Um, and as Jennifer so kindly noted, uh, Philly born and raised. I graduated from Tyler School of Art in 2018 with my BFA. Um, in ceramics and in sculpture with a uh, minor in art history. Um, and before that, I think it's important to give a little credit. I studied at Montgomery County Community College. Um, I studied ceramics under Michael Connolly, which 
was really my introduction to like, you know, pottery in high school and, and what you think pottery is to, uh, I was sent um, by the school to Ensika in 2013, where, I mean, my eyes were open at decals. I met Roberto Lugo for the, you know, just the whole world of what this actually is. So uh, that being said, I then went to Tyler uh, in 2015. I did all of that. Um, and now I live right outside of Philly. I have a little garage studio in my home that I just purchased over quarantine. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, my work now primarily focuses on functional wares. I enjoy slip casted functional wares um, as though I view them as kind of like a, a photograph, sort of. Um, people kind of give this bad rap to slip cast in ceramics as though it doesn't really have much value, but quite the opposite. You know, I really see it as an opportunity to play and sort of snapshot that object for later on if I, if I want it um, to manipulate. So that's my uh, functional and like ceramic side, but then my sculptural side is always, you know, bigger than my brain can hold. And I love the idea of installation and, and you know, can I call the ICA and, and put a piece in, but we have to take down the wall. Um, so that being said, I love the idea of working in these small cubes because it allows me to take these huge ideas um, that I harness and kind of actually make them possible, right? Because it's only four inches by four inches. So I really love that. and. A common theme I notice is people tend to think about their work after, you know, Christmas and, and January, the first of the year. And I start to actually think about my little box um, come like October, fall time. Um, and these ones specifically on the left is, uh, these are bars in Philadelphia. So I wanted to, I'm a bartender. Um, that's how I paid my way through college. My mom was a bartender when I was a little kid. So on the left is Tattooed Moms, um, and on the right is the Oyster House. And I wanted to speak to, you know, what a hard year it was, 2020 being um, in the service industry, um, you know, trying to get by, and then also speaking to the patrons and the people who rely on those seats as a, a sort of relief and a bit of cheap therapy, or maybe expensive therapy, depending on how much you're, you're there. But uh, really, I just wanted to kind of capture that moment of, of things that were kind of lost, uh, but also making it approachable and adding that little humor. And if you go back to the other slide, um, that's kind of where my work is. Also, you know, like on the left, I'm always speaking to being like a 90s kid. Uh, I think, you know, why not? It's what I know. So the left being the Hamburglar, um, pointing to a sign like it wasn't me you know he didn't rob the burgers and then on the right this um another slip cast object with these milk jugs i enjoy making um cream uh being referencing like a bartending theme you know uh, also a wu-tang song cash rules everything around me so those long nights where you're shaking it up serving the drinks and then you sit down and have a drink and count your cash so that's that's my work and that's who i am yeah. That's great. Is that, is that why the milk jug has a silver crown? It's your, it's your treasure. Yeah. It's also um, a Patron lid. Once a year, Patron around the holidays will uh, jazz up their bottles with these fancy silver toppers. Got it. So yeah. around the holidays, that's all I drink is tequila to get the toppers. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need to do for your art, actually. <laughs> the art really is what it is. You know? I totally get that. Um, yeah, I, I think that these definitely serve that purpose of putting us back in the mind of what it feels like to be in the space and um, your use of perspective. And I guess I didn't really realize um, before that the reflections of the box actually make it look even more expansive. It sort of looks like you're really looking into the space and can see around the corner. Um, I happen to love the oyster bar, so. Yeah. Missing, missing those spots and seeing them empty like this. Is... Uh, you cannot get oysters to go unless you've had a pleasurable experience with that, but oysters are not traveling. <laughs> no, you really can't. And you, and you just, you can't enjoy them unless somebody else shucks them for you. Right, so. right. Ooh, it seems dangerous. You need... 
Oh, yeah, you need the mesh glove and everything, for the whole situation. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Okay, excellent. We are going to turn to Brian Wilkerson now. Hi. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Let me pin you. There you go. Brian Wilkerson earned his BFA from University of Tennessee and his MFA from Ohio State University. He currently lives in Tennessee, whereas he is a professor at Roan State Community College. Correct. Excellent. So do you want to talk a little bit about your general sure. body of work? And then yeah, I, work you know, I'm, I like to make a lot of different things, honestly, but I, probably what I'm, if anybody recognizes me for anything, it's these whimsical character based cups and mugs and functional things that I like to make. Um, very cartoony. I like to uh, somehow breathe some sort of emotion into them if I can. And, you know, when, so when I started making them smaller, they turned out, and, and it wasn't a real push for me either. My thesis show many years ago was all things that could probably fit inside of a shoebox with a lot mm -hmm. of small carved elements. So it doesn't take a lot of pushing to get me to want to work small. Um, but what I discovered, and I, I try to make these with all the same uh, detail, mark making um, that I do in the, in the regular sized ones. And I think as I do this show, and I really look forward to trying to get into this show every year. And um, I think I'm going smaller. I don't want to go bigger. I want to, what's the smallest work you've ever had? I'm just curious. Oh, well, this year we have, it's glass, actually. It is a... Um, a little vase it's this big and um, it has blue and white deck uh, painted decoration it must be with like a one hair brush um, it's amazing yeah and it's yeah. that big so yeah I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna love work that. on that okay I, I think I want to keep going down the uh, the smaller scale you know it, it, like nesting dolls to where <laughs> Uh, there you go myself. but they don't you know one thing i think about the way they turn out they don't look like, like smaller scaled versions of the work but somehow they have this like almost like hatchlings you know like they're babies uh, of of my work so i always think everybody has this response to anything that's like a newborn or a tiny baby version of it is just kind of like oh and so i think there's something about when they're small like that that they possess that that dainty quality yeah, there's a there's research about biologically we're attracted to things that the eyes are a greater percentage of the head because that's what babies have like big eyes and a smaller head. So mm -hmm. the fact that the eyes are still pretty big in the tiny head is that's why we like this and that's why we like Hello Kitty. Right. Maybe yeah. All that. Me. Yeah. Pop, pop imagery, pop culture, cartoons. Um, yeah, that's all a big toys. That's all a big influence on my work. Um, do you want to talk about the back and how, or do all, does all your work have a second image on the back? Yeah. And so, you know, I, this has been an evolution for me. And I think at the beginning, I, you know, and I worked as a production potter at one point and kind of steered away from that and then came back to pottery. And when I came back to it, I kind of was skipping some of the important steps of cleaning things up and making it very functional. And I, uh, I have since kind of cleaned all that up and revisited it. So now I become obsessive about every aspect of it. And I think about every part, you know, what, what can I push? What can I make? It, it's an opportunity. The bottom has an image on it too. in this little cup, if you pick it up and look at the bottom. So, um, and, and I started those originally, those little medallions on the back were a separate piece. I like to fuse things on with glaze. That's just, I think it's funny to me. So I would have, and I don't do that as much anymore because I realized it wasn't translating in the work and it's all this extra effort that people are like, oh, I didn't even realize you were doing that. But, you know, I like to have it in the kiln like this and then I would place the skull up against it and then take a kiln brick and push it on there and fire it. And sometimes they would slip off. And so I'll be honest, I do slip and score some of those on now. I, yeah. There's some that are held by glaze fusing it and then some are just attached, but um, yeah, I like to have a secondary motif on the back, like a surprise. Um, yeah, well, and sometimes, right, I, I see your point that if people aren't appreciating it, even though you know you're in there with the kiln bricks, like, you gotta, <laughs> right, right. if you're really... It, it takes up so much more room and everything, and I was like, well, 
why don't you just attach it? And I was like, okay. <laughs> Right, and you had to spend that time again, kind of going back to perfection. So you can't, anyway, it's all about making choices, just like life. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, Brian. I really yeah, appreciate it. My pleasure. I thanks look for having me. To... This has been fun. It's awesome. I look forward to seeing your small favors every year. So yeah, I'll have... I hope to visit the new place. Maybe next year for the opening, I will pay, pay a visit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will. We already have small favors on the calendar there. It's going to look a lot different in the new building. Very good. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Okay, we have Jarmal writes up next. Where are you, Jarmal? There you are. Okay. Jarmal writes is an artist and activist living and thriving in Philadelphia. She mostly <laughs> makes ceramics in her North Philly studio. Feel free to add anything to that. Uh... Hi, I actually, uh, writing bios is really, uh, feels funny. Am I, I have, someone wrote that, a friend, Rose Luardo, a Philly superstar wrote that bio for me. Uh, yeah, so uh, that kind of sums it up. I, for my day job, I have a ceramic business called Jarmel by Jarmel, which is also a play on how most people say my name Jarmel and um that comes from that I sell mostly functional ceramics I do some like design and illustration so I make a lot of like planters and stuff like that sponge holders everyday objects that can be a little boring but as ceramists we know that we can make them really fun and playful um my logo is adding sunshine and rainbows to this six sad world and my work is playful, satirical, sometimes political. Um, I just noticed that that perfume bottle said hoagie. Hoagie number five. Hoagie number I five. actually, it's fun. I looked at the Chanel number five because in my mind, I don't really wear perfume, but I'm like, that's like the one, right? Um, everybody knows what it is. Fancy what it looks like. to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that... Uh, I would like to say something on slip casting actually, which uh, Ashley, Ashley yeah. up. I tried to make a mold of a Gatorade bottle, which I was unsuccessful at. And I sculpted that Gatorade bottle because I couldn't make the mold. I think it's a really cool uh, way to do ceramics. Um, it's hard, and, right? Yeah. And I think that there is like a really heavy, like thought of like what, qualifies as like being able to be an artist or a ceramist or any of that stuff I studied ceramics really heavy in high school thinking that that was going to be my uh whole thing about college and stuff but after you know a semester of college I dropped out and then also pottery is a little classist in the way that it's like not really accessible for a lot of people. We're not really talking about my work right now, but uh, this all does kind of play into the process. I love this. And Jennifer, I, give her seven minutes. <laughs> I would and if I could I, actually. Yeah, and then I started to go to Fleischer when I really craved being, like having my hands on dirt and like really needing. And then there's very, very small window of studio hours that you can actually be there. And then I started to go to the clay studio, which has a bigger window. And it was really great. It was like really the place that like allowed me to like step back into that role until Hope Revolto, who was a Philly superstar, I uh, started sharing a studio with them. And then I now have my own studio in Fishtown, which I have a few people running from uh, Sarah Gallo, who's also, in my opinion, a superstar. Uh, and it's a really great space that I worked really hard on and I love it. Okay. Yeah. So that's back amazing. To my work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's talk about your small favor. So this small favors piece actually, and I would like to say in the previous photo, that pony I made for small favors and measured it. It was too big. So I never entered it. I had no idea it could go on a pedestal. <laughs> It's not supposed to. I yeah. should stop showing people that. So I didn't <laughs> enter that in and used it for something else. But the the hammer uh, was really fun 
to sculpt, my partner had asked me to get uh, them a $200 hammer by this company, Martinez. And I was like, no, but instead I sculpted a $200 hammer because I thought it was so funny. Of course, hammers cost $200, but to me, that's just so absurd. Well, a lot of people think $200 for a ceramic cup is also absurd, but that's true. Like, I no, mean, it's all about yeah. your perspective. Um, <laughs> and then I should we note, should we tell people how much the $200 hammer was listed? Yeah, so the $200 hammer, I entered two things into the, uh, to the show this year. And one of them I made uh, intentionally for the show, which I've been making these scrap monsters out of uh, just the clay that I have left over because recycling clay takes a lot. I don't have a pug mill and it's just kind of really hard for me to do in my life right now. So I've been making just these scrap monsters that really just speak to my soul so much. And the hammer I entered because I just wanted to put it out there, but I really wanted I was like, I need to have 15, I need to pay a month's rent mortgage actually uh, in order to walk away with this hammer. So I was like, doubled that and I'm selling it. If somebody wants it for $3,000, I'm happy to part with it. But otherwise I was like, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for that story. And maybe when we talk to Kintsuki at the end, we can, we can talk about um, the hammer and, and just making choices. And so through the application process, we only uh, accepted one thing from each person. So yeah. that was, that was part of Which that. I really love that. And I love how many artists are in it. Small Favors is one of my favorite exhibitions all in all of Philly. And I too love small things, which I love the theme of some people here loving small things. And I have a bunch of, you know, old, letterpress shelves and all of these things hung all over my house with a ton of tiny things and small favors it's sad that they're the openings and stuff aren't happening because it is just one of the best things yeah yeah oh I'm so happy to hear that thank you so much Jarmo yes. I love this year I I mean it's so much terrible stuff has happened but I've never been able to talk to this many small favors artists and like like really dive in so it's been excellent for me in just that little that was that, yeah. that'll be my moment of joy for today yes thanks Jermel. okay cool we are gonna move on to kayla uh, oops hold on ah sometimes my escape button doesn't work kayla where are you oh, i'm here <laughs> they're talking and then you'll go to the front oh there you are okay Dun. Kayla. Kayla Cho is an artist living in North Carolina. Kayla earned a BFA at Appala Appalachian State University and works with ceramics and painting. Just going to say that I, I pronounced that correctly because my friend Layla told me that you're supposed to say Appalachia, like you're throwing an Appalachia. <laughs> Did I say it right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kayla, would you like to tell us a little bit about your general work and then about small papers? Yeah. So hi, I'm Kayla Cho. My pronouns are they, them. I I live in Boone, North Carolina right now. I recently gradu graduated um, with my BFA in ceramics in December and will be moving to Philly later this year. Um, so the piece I submitted to small papers is from a series of work that made up my BFA thesis. In the series of works, I explored how baked goods evoked emotional connections through nostalgia. As a baker and a ceramicist, I've noticed how clay and dough share similar qualities, and I felt this especially when needing these materials. Along with these physical qualities, clay and dough share nostalgic qualities, and to me, clay and baking are conduits of memory. I created a series of re realistic pastries through clay to reflect on these physical and emotional connections. Um, my ceramic pastries were created the same way I would create their edible counterparts. So they were kneaded and with the danishes, I like twisted them um, to get those curls and textures. Um, each danish I created was personalized for close friends with a handwritten message on the bottom of each piece that had a reflection of the, rep the relationship it represented. Um, so after the show, 
this Danish will be gifted to the individual I held in my heart as I shaped the pastry, hoping it will invoke memories of our time shared together. That's yeah. oh, Caroline sorry. is actually in this group chat or in this <laughs> Zoom call. Too. Hi, Caroline. Um, that's great. And it's so wonderful to think about um, when you bake for people and give it to them, which is, you know, something I do, something my friends do, it, you can't keep it. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, you get to give them a baked good, but it lasts forever. Yeah. Really and good. I'm so glad that um, this was able to be in a physical show because my senior show was all online. Mm. Um, we just had like a website for our exhibition, which I'm glad we still had the exhibition, of course. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have to take take what we can get, but it's still it's okay to be disappointed. We're all having to share those emotions. Um, it's so interesting to me that, um, oh, there's one by itself, that you mentioned um, the connection between baking and ceramics. There's an artist, Adam Chow, whose work doesn't reflect necessarily um, looking like baked goods, but his family owned a bakery as he was growing up. And so he talks a lot about the physicality of working with um, the same way you did clay and dough. So that's yeah, and, um, I used a, a cold surface to make them more realistic. These are all like acrylic painted and the berries and like the icing have like, um, I forget what it's called. I haven't painted in a while. Um, so they have oh. like a little like glaze on top. Uh, I forget what it's called, but. Um, to make it shiny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, well, I'll ask you the opposite question because you've met your you're showing us work that is always going to fit into that small favors box. Do you work big? And is that um, a challenge? I do, yeah. I, um, I do like slip casting. And um, I mean, right now I've been mostly making just like cups and have been taking like, since I just graduated, I feel like I'm taking like a couple step, steps back and I'm doing like sgraffito work again and like more hand building just to like, I don't know, remind myself of like the fun things about clay and not having to work about like con work with like concepts and all that. Yeah, there's a it's nice to be able to go back and forth between those yeah. things and sort of have the parameters and then remove them and feel that freedom. Yeah. Talk to artists yeah. about that. I am imagining a cup that looks like a Danish. So let me know <laughs> if you work on that. Yeah, for sure. And um I actually wanted uh to show you this boot that I slip cast. Um I like slip casted like a like a real cowboy boot. Oh, we have another we have another I'm theme about so much slip casting yeah. I like brought this out from my room <laughs> yeah and I got like all the textures and all that and I'm just a big fan of slip casting that's amazing um did you have to sacrifice the boot yeah or... you did yeah. <laughs> but it was, I got it from a thrift store so okay it wasn't a super memorable boot yeah. for you <laughs> okay well thanks so much for sharing that with us Kayla thank you for having me Excellent. And we look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia. Yes. Cool. Okay. I am going to ask Kinsuki to come forward and we're just going to say hello and thank him again for being um, our juror. And we can just chat for a minute about the process. Oops, if I can find him. He's still with us. I have to stop my share. Sorry, guys. Hold on one sec. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, good. If you talk, then I can see you. Oh, there you are. Uh, Great. Multitasking. Yep, me too. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, just with just within the process here. Um, oops. I didn't share my screen. Okay, so everybody can see. This is um, Kinsuki's small favor for the year. And um, I really enjoyed, I just wanna thank you again for doing this with us. Kintsuki was a resident at the Clay Studio. <clears throat> um, and so we like to reach out to our resident alum and ask them to, to join us again and think about their time here. Um, we had a really nice time. We had to go through 800 images everybody there were 800 objects that were submitted through the application process um and we had fun or i had fun i don't know what did you think kintsuki was it fun 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, I don't think I picked every one of them. Probably Clay Studio had a couple, you know, you guys had a couple people that's, you know, you guys sent an invitation to it probably. And uh, I had, uh, what, 12 people, 11 people I invited who's not intentionally, I picked the people from not in the Philly area and uh, somebody that, uh, you know, I, I hope that uh, people in that area would see it. So, you know, some upcoming people to, and most of them I don't really know in person. The person I invited is, is you know, I, I don't really invite like friends to other show unless if their work is not fit to the exhibit. But this, you know, the, the, often the you know, when you're picking a work, this kind of exhibition is is different than others because you know we don't we don't our theme is the piece needs to fit to a four by four so I kind of follow that so uh, as long as that what I picked everything has to fit in the four by four because that's kind of fun part of it. <laughs> but sometimes also, uh, I'm just gonna tell you sometimes we don't know it doesn't fit until right, it gets right. there. <laughs> so also uh, most of people not making that small work in a regular basis and. Uh, uh, so when I look through all slides, um, it's pretty much, you know, the first impression of what is that? Like, what is it? Like make you stop to look at it, which I kind of applies to any kind of exhibit because uh, when you apply graduate school jobs or exhibit, what we're going to see is a slide first and then, you know, catches your eye. I'm not going to read through your resume, read through, you know, who you are or anything first. Usually, you know, what catches the eye. I think it applies to many different exhibit too and something that we should learn if we apply, you know, exhibit and if we're going to get in. Yeah. I think because, uh, you know, most of the time when you go gallery, they don't know that's made out of ceramics. They don't know it's a wood, clay. They don't know what the process is they're just there to buy some art yeah. and look at some arts and you know so the first thing the how we can catch people's eyes so this exhibit is kind of that is the whole thing that when we look through a couple hundred slides what catches my eye and then you know even there's some long writing under there but I didn't even read it so uh, I didn't even see your name or any information just the work itself so which is kind of interesting because you know essentially I think that's very important if you are applying exhibit because you need yeah. the work needs to be somehow stands out and stands up and then catches my eye yeah so that's a good that's really yeah. good for people to remember um, that it's it's worth it to get your work either photographed professionally or to kind of just there's so much online now that you can read about how to make the image look good and like you said just to, it has to stand out and make you stop especially when you're looking through 800 things um I really appreciate that you sent the invitations that you did again people who don't live in Philly people who are in other spots and that's that's why um at the clay studio we're really dedicated to always having gestures because there's there's Oh, it's always better to have more people's opinions and more people's experience together. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me for, for me to be the only person choosing. Um, so I appreciate you bringing all those things. And then I liked it a few times where I was kind of like, well, I like this one. And I was thinking maybe Kintsuki wouldn't. And he was like, it's cute. I like it too. <laughs> that was nice. I mean, again, you know, what catches your eye? I mean, look at how they exhibit on the wall. Like, right. it's a lot. And you know? also... And when you when you skim through it, well, what catches your eye? You know, like I, I remember whoever made Danish the, the bakery stuff, but I remember that was in the slide. But at this point, I don't remember most of it because yeah. it's just going fast. <laughs> it does. It goes by so fast. Yeah. yeah. So, so well, yeah. So it, it, it was really interesting for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks again, and it's just also nice to to have you here at our our last celebration and um, make sure everybody knows how much work you did for us and that we appreciate it. So I'm gonna go to the chat. I think that, um, P.S. I like your background. I don't think it's real, but it's fun. Is that like somebody's French art studio behind you there? Well, this is my studio. <laughs> is that really, but it looks like you're in Does a- Does it look fake? It looks a little fake there, Kintsuki. <laughs> and usually you're on a tropical beach, so. I think I think it's a Matisse studio. Oh, Matisse studio, okay, great. Um, I'm going to go to the chat and just see if anyone had any questions. There are a lot of people saying hi from all over the place. 
things are fantastic. As usual, Raymond put the uh, link to the Small Favors exhibition in the chat if anybody wants to click through from there. Um, and Raymond would like to ask Margarita if that is an ox blood glaze on your cups. Oh, you responded. We call it dragon's breath. Very nice. I see. Sorry. Um, excellent. Well, there's just a lot of people saying that it's cool and already all the questions are being answered. I don't even need to do this. So thank you. I, I'm a little sad that this is the end of our small favors, but I'm just, my heart is full with everybody's wonderful work and um, the fact that you enjoyed doing a small favor. Hopefully you'll um, apply next year and we can do this all over again. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you. Feel free to say goodbye.